It is time to do some animation. We worked very hard to create this ball and also to rig it, you know, do the shadow stuff and also all these other controls like the light direction and then the stretch, right? The stretchy. So let me undo all of this. Now that we created all these controls, let's put them to work. Let's animate them and create something very exciting. So to do that, we're going to select this ball, press P to reveal the position property. We're going to be animating the Y position. So take the time indicator to the very beginning of our composition. Let's go forward seven frames from the beginning. Press page down seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we're going to set our first keyframe for the Y position at zero. So that's where it's going to arrive. We're going to take it back to the beginning and we're going to push this ball way up top here, probably around negative 1000 like this. So if I preview this, it just, you know, drops. It's very linear. It's very boring. So let's make it more exciting. And to do that, we're going to use a free script called Bouncer. Now, if you don't know anything about Bouncer, Bouncer obviously is a free script that you can download at ukramedia.com slash Bouncer. The link to that is at the bottom of this video. But Bouncer is a special script because a guy that created it, his name is Tim Thiessen. He unexpectedly passed away, but it was very sad. We miss him dearly. He, he was uh, my mentor. He taught me a lot of expressions, a lot of scripting, and uh, I learned a lot from him. So he played a huge role in my life, and I'm forever grateful. I got connected with his family. Uh, I talked to his son now. It's, it's very special. So this script is very special to me personally, and uh, every time I use it, I think of Tim. So we miss him dearly. But that's what we're going to use, and uh, we're going to go over here. Make sure you select this selected. What, what that does basically, whatever property you select, and when you hit bounce it, it applies it to selected properties. That's what it does. And for the second option here, instead of overshoot, which comes by default, which overshoot just uh, like a rubber band effect, it will go through the floor and kind of give you that rubber band effect. But we want for it to bounce back. So we want to hit it and then bounce back. That's what we're going to use. So select this property. And once you've done all these options, and let's click bounce it. When you do that, it applies it, as you can see, our value is lit up in red, which means the code or an expression is driving this property. And when you do that, also we have these other properties that we can adjust. So in here you can adjust, but I'm going to leave it as is. It looks fine. So let's preview this. This is what it looks like now. Much better. Definitely looks, uh, it looks like it has more personality. But right now it looks like a bowling ball dropping. But I want it to be very stretchy, very kind of bouncy, like a bouncy ball. And uh, to do that, we're going to alter some other options here. So we're going to go to this ball right here. And we're going to go to Master Properties. So we're going to be working with this Rotation X. So when it drops, I also want to animate this rotation right here, X. And uh, to do that, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select this Y position and control select the rotation X. Those are the two properties that I want to work with. And then I'm going to press S twice to solo both of them. So then I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch for the rotation X. And I'm going to pick whip to the Y rotation. In other words, it's going to grab this animation and it's going to apply it to here. So let's see what happens when, when you do that. Obviously, it's, it's going nuts. So not exactly what we want here, but I want to grab the velocity from that animation. I'm going to say velocity. So again, let's preview this. It's still going to act pretty crazy. So we need to tone that down. And uh, to tone that down, we're just going to say times, let's do something like 0 0.01. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Not bad. It gives us a nice little wobble. But that still looks like a bowling ball in some ways, right? We need to really play with the stretchy part. I really want like a squish and all that stuff. So let's work on that next. So to do that, we're going to go to controls. We're going to press E to reveal all of our effects. And we have this stretchy here. And we're going to alt click on the stopwatch here. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to pick whip to the Y position, the keyframe animation, right? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to want to grab the velocity. So when I click away, it's it's pretty crazy. So let's do this. We're going to say times, let's do 0 0.01 again. Let's see what that looks like. I mean, obviously it's stretchy, all right, but I think it's too much. So especially like right here, that's way too much. So I'm going to say maybe something like 0, 0.0 and let's do another 0, 0.5. That looks much better. Again, you can play with this number, and but this is what I'm going to hold on to. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Now, the only thing that you might want to do is to enable the motion blur. So right now, if I go to the beginning of this animation, you can see that 
Our ball is traveling pretty fast here. However, it doesn't have any motion blur at all. So if you want to enable the motion blur, all you have to do is just go over here to the ball and ball shadow. So both of these will need the motion blur. And to enable those, you just have to go over here and make sure both of these are checked. So once you do that, you can see the motion blur is active and it's working well. And if you don't see the motion blur after doing this, you want to make sure that this right here is also highlighted because this is like a global motion blur function. You can kind of select which layers you want the motion blur to be applied on. But this thing right here enables and disables the motion blur for the entire composition. So make sure that one is highlighted and let's preview this. All right, well, that's the end of this tutorial. I want to thank you for watching it. And if you want to support what we do here at Ucra Media, you can do so by purchasing the project file from this tutorial for $5. This way you'll have the project file. You can open it up. You can dissect it. You can change things up. You can use it on any projects you want. It's a great learning tool. And you will be supporting what we do here at Ucra Media. So we want to thank you for your support. But in the meantime, my name is Sergey Praknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.